Hello everyone, welcome to a pocket-sized edition of ARG Presents in Color. Nope. I'm Amigo Aaron, joined as always by a man who's not only a gypsy, tramp, he's also a thief. Lay your money down for the rent. But you're going to say it was pocket-sized. Clearly not. <laughs> so, if you tuned in last week, we spun the wheel two times. Yes. We made two deals, and this week, we'll be playing games on the beloved, eh, yeah, on the Japanese exclusive, hmm, not no, really, no, on the incredibly rare, you'll never, hmm, eh, Neo Geo Pocket Color console. Middle of the road, everywhere it goes. Correct the window. So, Brent, what do you know about the Neo Geo Pocket? Very little. I actually thought that this... Uh, console was more beloved than it actually is. It appears, like I said, it's pretty middle of the road. Opinions really do sway up and down on it. It is truly a mixed bag. Yes. If I may, I have taken the time, the liberty to look up a few factoids about the Neo Geo Color Pocket and the regular Pocket. Let's go. Yep. Let's get into it. So, let's do it. <clears throat> this was manufactured by the same people that manufactured the Neo Geo consoles and the Neo Geo Arcade. Uh, switching consoles, which was SNK. Yes. Uh, they, of course, if you are familiar with the original Neo Geos, super duper expensive, super duper elite areas yes. of gameplay were achieved by these consoles. Uh, and this was their uh, oddly budgeted yeah. handheld. Um, so the original Neo Geo Pocket uh, came out in Japan March 16th of 99. Had a North American release of August 6th of 99, and in Europe it was October 1st. So get this, Brent. Uh, introductory price back in 99, $69.95 US yes. bucks, and yep. today's money, $105. Yeah, so pretty budget. Not bad. Not a bad uh, price mm -hmm. on those. Of course, this thing took uh, ROM cartridges, as, they, as all the handhelds did back in those days. So... This thing would run on two AA batteries, and you would allegedly get 40 hours of gameplay. Yeah. Uh, that so, seems a little Well, I mean, over the top. I never read anyone complaining about the length of time no, the batteries I haven't lasted, either. so yeah. that must be pretty good. Now, here's a fun fact. Uh, this thing is not, you know, for a company that, that came out with the most powerful console in the Neo Geo, this is surprisingly... Let's say underpowered or not mega powered. It certainly isn't. When you think Neo Geo, you think awesome everything, and this is definitely not awesome everything in the realm of, of handheld. In fact, uh, a lot of reports I read had this: the power, uh, the processing power of this uh, particular console, even beneath the the Lynx, which came out a yep. good year ahead of this yep. one. So, of course, the Lynx was sort of overpowered. I it think. was, yeah, it was, and uh, it was a battery killer. Yes, so. Uh, <laughs> The funny thing about this is, unlike the uh, Wonder Swan that we, cover, uh, we covered a while back, this actually got a U.S. release. Yep. Now, uh, picture, one, picture the world in 1999, Brent. Ooh. Um, the Neo Geo Pocket in the U.S. was internet orders only. Yeah. So it was a little wacky. You had to go to the website. But eventually... Uh, they ended up releasing these things in Walmarts and a lot of other big retailers. And so, in fact, I remember going into a Target and, and seeing games. In fact, I bought a game for one at, at a Target. Bad, you know, this is eerily similar to the to the Wonder Swan. So, here comes, they've worked all this time on the Neo Geo Pocket. They release it, right? But right before they release it, the Game Boy Color is announced. Oops, not yeah. good. Now, to SNK's credit, in around five months after the original Pocket came out, the Color Pocket was ready. Right. So, uh, which is great. The downside, uh, it killed the original Pocket oh, dead man. as Julius Caesar. Yes. Yep. And so if you had one of the original black and white or you know grayscale, the Game Boy monochrome versions, you were outside looking in. And the thing is, is when Nintendo went from... The grayscale to the color, you know, years and years and years have passed. Right. When Neo Geo did it, it was, you know, Plus you months. Had, you had full <laughs> compatibility. Uh, For you know, the most part. Yeah, well, I mean, it was compatible with all the original Game Boy stuff. Plus, you could play the color stuff. This, you know, if you had that original black and white, you didn't have the vast library, like you mentioned, of the Game well, Boy. 
Right. Oh, certainly. Yeah, so, certainly. Now, when this came out in the true Japanese tradition, it released in multiple colors. Yeah. We got camouflage blue, carbon black, crystal white, platinum blue, platinum silver, and stone blue. I uh, like their blue. In the first two months, <clears throat> the, uh, the the Neo Geo Color Pocket uh, sold about twenty five thousand units. Not bad. And it's not that it's not bad, but it could be it could be better. Uh, so let's talk about the original real quick. Uh, and well, I guess this sort of goes for both of them. These things did have one thing in common with uh, the Game Boy is that they were not backlit. Yes, not yeah. good. Now I can tell you from personal experience, I hated that. Yeah, and I so much wanted to like the GBA, the original. I remember you had one. Yes, and I wanted to play Tony Hawk, and I was like, man, you cannot see this in the light. Yeah. You're boned. Yeah, if you're if you're even in a well lit room, you it's very hard to play. And if you're outside, forget about. It. So Neo G or uh, SNK really wanted this thing to be a hit in the states. Uh, in in ninety nine, the Christmas season was coming around. They spent four million dollars on television ads that aired on MTV, Comedy Central, and the Cartoon Network, which is kind of neat. They didn't get that now, money back. Tell me where <laughs> tell me where this sounds familiar to you. By May two thousand, the Neo Geo Pocket Color had captured a whopping two percent. For SNK's American unit, SNK USA, to turn a profit. Wow. Which was surprising Whoa, to me when I read that. Yeah. Seriously, wow. I know, it's crazy, eh? Um, there was an another version of the of the uh, color pocket, which or pocket color, whatever you want to say it, uh, that came out in October uh, that uh, was a little s slimmer, uh, but it, I don't think it ever got a, a, a release anywhere else. Right. Now, at this time, SNK was get, taking a beating, yes. uh, and they were eventually, in June of 2000, they were bought by Aruz. And when after that, Aruz pretty much canceled all stuff that was going on outside of Japan. Yeah. So, basically, they were blowing these things out in the States, uh, and you could even get uh, some package deals that would come with games that were never released in the United States. A game called, uh, boy, I'm going to try to pronounce this, Fasalil, and also The Last Blade, never released in the U.S. You could get them in bundles. And the funny thing is they were never they were never uh, translated. So when right. you bought these, they were in Japanese. Well, and something about the Neo Geo Pocket Color, uh, region free. Correct. So anything would work in anything. Correct. So I guess if you're an importer, you're laughing. Right. Um, and another thing, when Azure took over uh, for SNK... Uh, and when they released the 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 uh, the uh, pocket games in the, in the states, they had these your traditional in the U.S. like cardboard boxes. Yes. Yeah. Other parts of the world got these real nice like plastic boxes. Yep. Well, when is there, when they took over uh, a ruse, I should say, when they took them over, everyone got the paper. Yeah. They, <laughs> it, well, I'm sure that added, and they weren't an and they weren't happy. The only people that got to keep those good boxes. Was the Europeans for once? The Europeans come out on top. Uh, it was a cost-cutting measure, of course. Um, so you also had. Um, let's talk a little bit about the actual console. What did it have? Of course, you had your battery uh, area. It also had a link cable yes. uh, socket. Yep. Uh, for the obvious reason, you could play linked-up games uh, on it, which is that was sort of the thing back in the day. Uh, oh, sure. You know, sure. Um, the uh, it got very limited third-party support. I mean, very limited. Uh, in fact, it was limited to basically one company, and it was Sega. Uh, and they they re they re released a game on it called called Sonic the Hedgehog Pocket Adventure, uh, which is kind of wacky. Now, get this: the uh, uh, this thing they thought to themselves when they released this, we're going to work an angle with Sega. And they made it so you could actually hook these things up and, and play certain games on the Dreamcast yeah. with them. That didn't go too good either. Nope. Dreamcast tanked, <laughs> tankery dankery do, and it and it was gone. When, when you when you tie your uh, life raft around a, a sinking boulder, it's never good. That's kind of a bummer, though. It in is, all honesty. Yeah. Uh, but the, you know what are you going to do? So w one thing that the uh, pocket Neo Geos were known for 
was a very capable, in fact, very popular uh, joypad. Uh, these things had a, a, a joypad, which this is as topical as ever, and I'll get to why in a minute. I but the little little one. nub it had where it was called a clicky nub, and it yep. actually had little micro switches Actual, in there. Actual factual now, arcade. Micro I haven't switches, touched yes. one of these things for many moons, but uh, I you know you can't go wrong with the micro switches. Nope. Now, as we are recording this, the SNK Neo Geo Mini has just bounced out in the past week or so. Yeah, this is their Neo Geo's answer to the NES Classic, the little small one in the Super NES Classic. That's right, and it's in a little arcade paint machine. And I, I've watched a lot of uh, reviews of this thing. I have as well. And it's been getting yeah. sort of, I'm not going to say panned, but at least kicked around. It, it Pretty and, hard. And, and well, I yeah. don't think they, I, don't, I think they didn't think this thing through fully. But one of the biggest complaints I've read was that the external controllers you get, which are Mostly identical to the ones that ship with the Neo Geo CD unit from back in the day. Correct. And they were very popular. Absolutely. The Neo Geo CD unit had the clicky stick. Yes. That was that was their thing. It was still a joypad. Right. But it, it had micro switches, so you got really good diagonals right. and everything the else. The new one has no click. No click. It's straight up smooth, yeah. and it suffers for no, it. No, it, it uses a membrane instead of micro switches, and they otherwise did not change the design I have heard it is abysmal. I've heard it's so bad that it's unplayable. Well, so. you know, it's a real bummer that uh, it that that you know. But I mean, I think the majority of people buying that system are going to stick it on a, in a box on the shelf and never play it. But here's the thing: because and who's going to sit there and play that little that little stick? Well, I've heard <laughs> the stick on the machine right is pretty okay. Good. But I mean, you've got the, it's, that thing is so small. People like us, you know, right. It, and the button layout is two yeah, and two. You know, it's a, that's a weird system. Plus, it's not portable. Strange. So uh, yeah, let's let's say no that batteries. that's their let's say that that's Neo Geo's next to work and uh, in a portable system. Not so good. They yeah, <laughs> not so good at all. Um, Apparently, they took that boulder and went ahead and took, tied it to a bigger, heavier <laughs> boulder. Yeah, yeah, man. So uh, it's funny when this thing went under. Uh, they were actually developing an MP3 audio player for it. Be interesting to see something that weak. I'm assuming that th the cartridge would have a lot of extra horsepower in it. Uh, I mean, now get this: in Japan, time, in wouldn't. Japan, there was a wireless connector release to where that allowed yeah. several players to play together in close proximity. Kind of neat. So it's sort of like a remedial Wi-Fi, I guess. Well, uh, yeah. I think it was more like Bluetooth, but yes, I understand what you're saying. The, the problem is uh, everyone had to have one. Right, right. You know? And when things like that aren't built into the hardware, boy, it's tough to convince you know two or four of your friends to, off, to pony up for the extra hardware. Correct. So sadly, uh, this was a short-lived console, especially yeah. in the States. Remember that this thing... Launched in the U.S. in August of '99, they ended support for it. They discontinued it in June of 2000. Yep. Japan, and it was the same in in, in Europe. In Japan, they they blasted until 2001, and then and then uh, you know that was the end of that. So kind of a bummer. Yeah. But you know what are you gonna do? So uh, we had a look at this library. Unlike the Wonder Swan. There were color off of color. Of course, there were. Yeah. Unlike the Wonder Swan, there were offerings. There were in English and yes. in Japanese. Yeah. Now, and, and so I had that. We both. I know yours was in English. Thank God. Well, yeah. It, and mine, mine had both. So we were lucky. So we picked two games from the vast library of the. Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't call it vast. Okay. I'm trying to up pump <laughs> it up here. We 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 picked two library or two games from the mi medium size, the smallish library of the Neo Geo Pocket Color. More so than the Action Max, less than the Game Boy. So I think <laughs> this week I will lead the charge. All right. And of course, uh, you all know me. I love me some pro wrestling, especially yes. from Japan. All right. So when I found out that Big Bang. Pro Wrestling was available in the Neo Geo Pocket Color. I was all in, brother. Get me in there. And so that's the game I'm picking this time around. I saw it on the list of things to choose. I was yeah. like, I, Aaron's picking that. So, I didn't even have to it's ask. It's funny. Inadvertently, I, I think I made a good choice, and I'll explain why. Yeah. So, yeah, so, um, so Big Bang Pro Wrestling. Great name. Yeah. Right? Not good. to be confused with the god-awful comedy series, The Big Bang Theory, which is no good. So uh, this was released... 
November 23rd of 2000. Yeah. All right. This was the last SNK release of a game for this. Oh, really? Uh, for, yes. So, uh, and this game came out uh, uh, for a uh, whopping 3,800 yen. You want to try to guess what that is in U.S. dough in 2018? Oh, oh, to, of today? Yeah. Uh, it's like 36 bucks. 51 bucks. 51 dollars. Uh, this wow, game, we've lost so much. Yeah. This game, now, just to get this out of the way, people have found ROM dumps of this thing that were under a different name. The other name was Wrestling Madness. Yes. Also a good name. So it, you couldn't go wrong. So, what is... What is Wrestling Madness slash Big Bang Pro? Well, it's a wrestling game. In fact, it's the only wrestling game released for the Neo Geo uh, Pocket Color. So, just to give you a little backstory, you've got a handful of wrestlers, and they're competing to be the best on the IEW mats. Yes. Now, I looked long and hard to find out what IEW stood for, and as far as I can tell, no one knows. I could not find it anywhere. I wasn't the first person to go looking. Uh, it was not to be found. So uh, you have uh, you get to pick from a, a pretty sizable cast of wrestlers, yeah, it was and he, and you're going after the championship held by the big huge guy Joseph. He's a big monster. Uh, you've got a, several different options. We'll get to, but I want to go over these this lineup of wrestlers here. All right. <clears throat> so first, you've got Brian McDougal. All right. He has a, uh, he's been compared to a Goldberg, or a, a big, he's a big kind of power guy. Uh, his finishing maneuver in the game is called the Argentine Driver, but for the rest of us, it's the old Burning Hammer, which is an awesome finisher. You've got another guy here. Now, some of these names get a little dicey. They're different in the manual. People have them say them different ways. You've got a guy here called Mashie the Oriental. Yes. Or known, he's also known as Macy. Uh, but in the manual, he's listed as the Oriental. So this dates this game. Now, one thing you could tell about this guy right away is he's he's got his hands up like this on his face. He's giving the old Muda. Yeah. He's yeah. getting ready to blow the, the green dust, Mist, yeah. which I love. Or a Kabuki, if you will, if you're real old school. So this guy's finishing maneuver uh, is the Scorpion Deathlock, yeah. just like the Sting, Stinger. Uh, then you've got a guy named Mike Machen or Martin. I've seen it both ways. And this guy is a uh, it's a slow guy, and he's but he's powerful. His finish maneuver is the same one Dr. Death Steve Williams used in All Japan Pro, the backdrop driver, which is a nasty, nasty move. You kill a sucker with that faux <laughs> reel. Um, then you've got a guy here, this guy, Dietz. <laughs> Dietz is basically like if you took an, uh, The Undertaker and mixed it with a zombie. You'd get yeah, this guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, his finishing move is it's called the neck hanging slam, but it's a choke slam. He grabs yeah. by a choke, he holds up here, and he and he, and he chokes, choke slams you down. So uh, he's a lumbering idiot that you know that that comes out sort of like the Undertaker. Then you've got Sho Hayama. Now this guy is listed as a practitioner of valet Tudo. Yep. But I have a problem with that because what he does is a lot of uh, is kickboxing mostly. Yes. He comes out like a Thai kickboxer. He's even got a little thing like a Thai, a little head thing. That his, was my guy, by the way. That's who I that's your That's your guy? He comes out, and his finishing maneuver, which I never saw this, it's called the show capture. Uh, I don't know what that means. I, I, did you ever get his finishing maneuver off? Yeah. What is that? It is, it's a uh, submission hold. Okay. You roll and grab him, and basically it's like an ankle lock. Okay. Then you've got David Bogner. Now, this is a big, <laughs> fat guy. He's the only guy in the game, by the way, that can't go up to the top rope. Too fat. <laughs> Too fat, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, some pe- I hear people say that he's a, he's a, a, a rip-off of Kevin Nash, like move-wise. But look-wise, he just looks like a big, dumb-looking fat guy. Yeah. His finishing maneuver is the Crazy Crunch. It's a Thunderfire Powerbomb Whip. Yeah. <laughs> only in Japan can you mix all those words together and make it mean something. <laughs> Um, then you've got Alex Fall. He's this guy that is supposed to be sort of like The Rock, right? And his finishing maneuvers, finishing maneuver, my personal favorite name of all these, The Wild Bottom, which is a rock bottom, but they call it The Wild Bottom, which I like that. Then you've got The Great Eagle. Uh-oh. Yes. Now, The Great Eagle, 
And we'll, he looks a lot. If you've ever played uh, uh, Garou Mark of the Wolf, yes, the fighting yeah. game, he looks a lot like Tizok. He does. And I used to play him in that game, and I always thought he looked really cool, but he was a crap character. Yeah. Always, he used to bug me. Anyway, in this game, the, he's, he's the Great Eagle, and he uh, finishes you with a eagle spike, which is a fisherman's buster. If you pick a guy up like a suplex, like a perfect plex, you drop him on their head. Uh, then you've got Joseph Steele. He's the champ. Uh, Joseph Steele, he's the boss of the IEW. He's super huge, and he's he's uh, sort of like an arrogant jerk of a guy. So like, I guess, like a... Uh, I don't know. I don't say Ric Flair, but somebody that's just a real into himself, you know, type. His Mr. Fi- Perfect type. His finish, or like, or maybe like a Shawn Michaels, because his finishing maneuvers is like a super kick, super kick basically. Yeah. So then, now, I did not get to see this character. I'm, I'm sad to say because I heard good things. There's also a hidden character, simply known as Key E K E I. Now, this is a character that was real. You after you played for a certain amount of time, she would just appear. Oh no! Yeah, I didn't see this either. Yeah, and she's supposed to be well, super, super. Uh, remember my from, yes. she's like that big bouncy girl uh, and her finishing maneuver is Falcon Arrow she's quick but she's weak So, but I hear she's real tough and you can also if you beat the boss you can play as the boss yeah. as well so all that aside what do you do in this game how do you play it well it's your standard game in terms of the gameplay uh, but what separates this game is they really put a lot of attention to detail yeah. in this game you pick your character from a you know a normal character selection screen. Then your characters come to the ring. They've got there's and they show them walking through the, down the aisle in front of the crowd. There's lightning going off and, and strobe lights and fire or whatever their gimmick is. Then they get in the ring. And then if you're playing the computer, they'll, they'll cut a promo on you. They, yes. Before they go to the ring, they'll cut a promo on you. And they're, these promos are as dopey as ever. <laughs> they are. Yeah, they're good. I it like rem- them. It reminded me somewhat of that 3DO wrestling game me and Bo played way, way back. This one plays a little better than that one, but it's very similar. Also, the guys in that were more directly ripped off from real guys than these guys are. But anyway, once you go through all the razzmatazz of getting in the ring... You start the match. It's just your, your two guys, and you got a ref. Yeah. The ref is awesome. Uh, the ref can be knocked down. The ref will do this thing. If he counts two and he doesn't get the third kid, he'll get up and go like this, yeah, like a real go, ref does. Shoulder, shoulders yeah, up. Yeah, which I love that. He'll count when you're doing something evil you're not supposed to be doing, which I like that. Uh, but so you go to work. So now, of course, the uh, uh, the pocket collar and the, and the pocket regular only have two. They have two buttons, two A buttons. and B. Yep. So... You can do quite a bit in this game for having two buttons. Yeah. Uh, and, you're, and I'm not going to go through every conceivable move, but it's pretty simple. If you've ever played a wrestling game, when you're standing there, if you hit A, you do a strike. And if you hit B, if you just if you just touch B, your guy does a taunt. The taunts are pretty funny. I, well, and it, I think it also had to do with how far you away you were. Well, if you're, mo- if you're moving in a direction and hit B, your guy takes off running. He'll run. B right. is sort of like the utility button. He'll, yeah. go, he'll go up the ropes, climb out of the ring, blah, blah, blah. Now, when you when you come up on a guy, if you if you touch him, you begin a grappling. It's a lot like fire pro wrestling. I yeah. saw it compared to that. It's a lot like that. The uh, difference, the key. It, it well, is, I mean, it's, 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 it's. I mean, if you look play the old ones, it is. Uh, the difference is when you lock up in this. Uh, the way these systems work, it's sort of timing based, and so when you lock up, you sort of have to know when to hit that button. You know what I mean? Which and that was can be very tough. hard when you didn't know what was going right. on. Right, and you can get used to it. But I will say, I had more trouble in this than I've had in Fire Pro. Of course, I played Fire Pro a ton. And then if you like, if you hit the A button in a grapple and you win the grapple, you'll do that maneuver. If you hold down and hit the A button, now and you'll do that maneuver. Right. Up does another maneuver. Back, you know, left and right does a maneuver. If they're laying on the ground, if you hit those buttons, he'll do a maneuver. Uh, there's a, there's a, quite a few maneuvers. Each guy probably has probably, I don't know, standing moves. He probably got four or five. He's got th- three or four ground moves. A lot of them do like cool stuff off the top rope. Eagle does like I think it's a four fifty. You know, some really cool stuff. Guys do all the submission holds. You know, it's really imp- quite impressive, isn't it? And the animation is. Spectacular! Yeah, it's it, really good, man. The, uh, when they go and get you in a figure four, I mean, because figure four is tough to draw when you're only using a handful of pixels yeah. to start with. But the way the animation puts you into the figure four, you know immediately I'm in a figure four. You know, there's no question about what the hold is. Now, there, there's uh, one thing that must be said is that some of the people, some of the same people that worked on the teams that did Fire Pro, worked on this. I so, they're, they're, so I mean, some of the key personnel 
And so you could you could see where there'd be a, a similarity. And like I said, for a small package, they pack a lot in. <clears throat> now, it's your standard wrestling fair. Uh, you've got uh, you've got uh, uh, difficulty settings for the computer. You can set your match rules, uh, stuff like that. And the like rules, there. I mean, it's they have a fair amount of rules that you can turn on where you can cheat. Uh, counting in and out of the ring. DQs. DQs. Yeah, yeah, you can use stuff. a chair in this, yeah. for example. So you can have standalone matches. You can also have tournaments, which is cool. You could turn time limits on and off. Time limits became a pain because yes. you could do a lot of draws if you don't set up, if, unless you're really good, you know. Um, you could win by pinfall submissions. You can, you, uh, you could, like I said, you could turn off rope breaks, stuff like that. You could have no rules matches where you can just beat the tar at each other and there are no rules, which is cool. Um, then you've got uh, weird stuff. So there are more than just singles matches. You've got some other goofier matches, right? Yeah. Let's talk about the casket match. Did you try any of these? I saw it as an option, and I meant to go back, <laughs> but I got caught up in the tournament. Yeah. And, and I got pretty far into the tournament, and I forgot all about it. Well, this match is kind of dopey, but I mean, just the fact that it's there. Yeah. I'm not sure of any... I can think of any wrestling game that has a casket match in it. I, I, there may be one of the WWE ones, but I don't remember it. And this one, basically, you can win pretty... I actually won a couple. You just basically beat the tar to your guy, and you whip him into the casket, and it shows an animation of your guy, like, closing the casket. That's it. <laughs> but it, so that one's, but it's still it's funny that it's there. Uh, they've also got this match that's, that's basically like a cash on a pole match. Yeah, the prize it's, it's a, it's match. A, yeah. So there's a pole outside the ring, and there's money up on top of yeah. it. And your job is to go out and climb this pole and get the money. So it's sort of like a ladder match. I mean, climbing a pole would be much tougher than climbing yes. a ladder. Uh, again, this one, I actually won this too. Yeah. It's not that tough. No, if you just get, you get rid of the other guy, run out there real quick. You can win these pretty quick. You, so. Yeah, you can do it in a minute. Yeah. Uh, so they're, they're not, those aren't the best, but they're still, it's neat that they're there. Yes. You know? Yeah. Uh, and I, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more stuff, but so it's, it's pretty cool. So, um, the uh, one aspect of the game that we talked about was the finishing maneuvers. So how do you hit a finisher? Well, it's quite simple, actually, unlike a lot of games. Uh, when you beat the Tartar guy, you'll see the name start flashing, all right? When the name is flashing, if you hit both your buttons, your guy will do a charge. Now, when he does this charge, if he gets the guy, there's a sort of close-up of the action. As your guy goes like, woohoo! And then he'll pull off the maneuver. It's, right. it's pretty cool. And by I believe charge, the old uh, uh, Nintendo Pro Wrestling game did something like that too, didn't they? Where they, they would zoom in for the big move, as I recall. Well, you know? I'll tell you what this reminds me of. And if you know the game, you'll understand. If you don't, you're going to be like, what the heck? Uh, double dribble. <laughs> it reminds me of double dribble on the NES. Why? Uh, that, I'd say <clears> I The characters, that. how they are that basically one color sprite. Because uh, when you pick your guy, it he's if you pick the guy and he's gray, he might be two or three shades of gray, but he's not detailed. He's which is kind of what they did in Double Dribble. And whenever you do something cool or something that they want to show emphasis of, they do a little cutscene, and you and then that's you know oh it's your guy powering up, oh, charging yeah, that's forward. Mean, yeah. That's like the dunks in Double Dribble, and then it cuts back to the action and yeah, it doesn't actually it doesn't affect happens. the action, but it adds right. to it. It's it's a, it's a it's a seamless maneuver. I like it. Which is exactly game, yeah. like I said. It's exactly yeah. what Double Dribble does. Uh, so it's it's a good it's a good move. I like the characters. I mean, they're not they're I would have some more wackier guys, but this is Japan. They weren't exactly one hundred percent into the wacky. Well, it depends on the year. Two thousand, eh, they probably were into the wacky a little bit. Uh, but I think they were trying to stay away from characters that were identical to real wrestlers because they, they didn't, probably yeah. were planning on releasing this in the U.S. Now, that's the funny thing about this. Despite the fact that it was has English and Japanese uh, you know, typesets in it, languages, they never released this in the States. This is a Japanese-only release. Like I said, SNK was literally in the process of going bankrupt as this was released. And so they never released this in the States. This was a Japan-only release. Huh. Kind of wacky. Um, you've got different ring choices, which is cool. Uh, again, a, a throwback to Fire Pro. Now, you, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I played this in English. Yes. Okay. The Japanese <laughs> version has English and okay. Japanese. All right. All right. Um, so they have uh, they have different logos for the middle of the ring, including a Neo Geo logo. Yeah. They've also got different colors for the ring. 
I believe I read somewhere where if you if you set the language on Japanese, you would get an extra choice in ring patterns, which is kind of kind of interesting. Huh. Uh, yeah, <laughs> kind of kind of crazy. Um, so the uh, again, I mentioned it was going to be called Wrestling Madness. When people t found these uh, ROMs and looked through them, they found differences in the art. The art was a lot goofier looking. There were color palettes were a little bit different, which is kind of weird. Uh, and uh, they had different intro and stuff to it as well. So huh. <laughs> kind of kind of nutty. So this being one of the last release games for the pocket, I, it's hard to judge it against the other games since it's the last one. But hey, I liked it. I thought it was fun. I picked it right up. It was uh, a quick, fun time. There were again, there were enough rules to make it interesting. I'm sure two players would be pretty fun. It does have verses, yeah, which would be fun. Uh, I dug it. I mean, it was it was was it sort of generic, yeah, but it's a pocket game, so I think it was a, I think it was a good game. I agree. Mm. Uh, I thought the animations were terrific. Sure, yeah, uh, and it had the extras that a wrestling game need to have. Like when you're doing playing the tournament, I was playing the the uh, martial artist guy. Yeah. And when I got to the ring, <clears throat> and the guy was like, "I know you're a practitioner of the like Poi Thai or whatever." Valley Two Do. Yeah. yeah. But this is wrestling, kid. <laughs> that stuff's not gonna fly. I was like, well, "You took my character and said something about me instead of just something blanket generic." It's sort of like when Street Fighter, when you beat a guy and he bad mouths the other guy. It's not like yeah. that. Something else I like is the guys don't all move the same. No, they, like that. Like the uh, the guy you played or Eagle, they're kind of light on their feet like a luchador, yeah. you know. And then you get the tubby guy, he kind of lumbers around. They move at different speeds. They took some time. Yes. Sit down and, and, uh, does it have creator wrestler? No. Uh -huh. that, but I mean, the wrestlers are good. They're a good variation, yeah. and it's not hard to learn once you sit down and mess with it for a while. It, the timing. I wish there was a bar or something that you could at least turn on to get the timing stamp because some of the stuff I never could figure out how to time it. Yeah, it, and, and the computer will reverse you like crazy if it wants. Also, to. the computer is very good at not being where your strikes are going. Oh my it's, gosh, that was actually the absolute worst aspect of the game. Yeah, he's tough to the, fight. The hitbox is—I don't know if it's so precise or it's too precise. But if you are on different planes at all, even one row of pixels, you won't hit. Yes, I agree. Which that affects your striking, that affects your off the rope moves. All that stuff. It's also odd that your name is huge at the top of the screen. You're, it and, is. And your opponent's kind of, and they're weird. They're written in a weird font. They probably could have done a little bit better there. Yeah, I'm not going to fault them on that, though. That was just a, a, a game choice I don't agree with. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but, if you compare this to, like, if you think, if you go back and think of a game like, uh, I'm trying to think of a, a wrestling games that are sort of along the lines of a kind of a generic wrestling game. I mean, this one ha checks off most of the boxes to make it a fun game game that is re that is a wrestling game like i said it's like a fire pro and it, it you know it's a uh, on the go sitting in, in the doctor's office like on a bus it's to be a lot of fun yeah yeah i agree like i said i played it i played the tournament i was trying so hard to beat the tournament but finally i was just like all right i'm done yeah but uh yeah it, it definitely had enough to bring me in get me engaged I played three or four of the wrestlers, but like I said, when I got locked in that tournament, I kept playing over and over and over the same guy. Oh, yeah. So, this is a pretty rare game, Brent. Really? Yes. Uh, it, it quite rare, actually. So, uh, I saw these go, not for sale, but actually sold for between 140 and up. Wow. So, wow. I didn't see anyone buying these for like 20 bucks. These yeah. are expensive, expensive games. They're rare. Apparently, there is a market for the Neo Geo uh, Pocket Color, and this being one of the, the last game, uh, I, I, I don't know how it mirrors other popular games of the color, but this one is, I mean, I don't care how popular or popular wrestling is, 150 bucks is 150 bucks. Yeah. It's a pretty, I wonder pretty how expensive. many units they made of this. Any idea? Don't, no, no, no. I have no idea. Mm. Considering it was the last game they released and that they didn't release it in the States, I'm guessing the numbers were low. What do you got for us, big man? I chose. I went kind of off the beaten path and chose Evolution Eternal Dungeon. Now, I'd actually heard of this. Um, did this get released or anything this else? This is a remake of the Dreamcast version. That's it. That's it. Uh, the, a remake? Yeah. It's, a, it's The odd part of this is for the Dreamcast, it used all 3D models, 
And in this, it did not. <laughs> yeah. So it was, but it follows the same story, the same storyline, the same characters. Uh, much different look and feel, but mm-hmm. it's still at its heart a RPG where you take the uh, control of the main character ML Mag Launcher. <laughs> yeah. Um. I'm going to hold my comments on that. Well, here's the thing. This is your classic RPG where it's all about fighting monsters, you know, finding the story, uh, advancing your character. Unfortunately, in my opinion, uh, Evolution and Eternal Dungeons falls on almost every regard. But let's talk a little bit about the game. Uh, as I said before, this was released as a Dreamcast game and then ported to the Neo Geo. Uh, It's turn-based, so it's not real-time. You input what you want your character to do. It has a uh, turn flowchart on the right-hand side of the screen, which shows who takes the next action. That way you can target enemies that are uh, you can maybe defeat before they get a turn. Um, Released in Japan and in the United Kingdom, Around the 2000 era. Um, Around the 2000. What, we don't have an exact date. Yeah, right? I do not. What, do you know when it was released on Dreamcast? I'd be interested to know that. I, I unfortunately do not. I didn't do a whole lot of research on the Dreamcast version because, like I said, they are the same. It must be pretty close. Graphics. Yeah. Uh, something about this that's kind of odd is the Japanese release using Japanese characters. Uh, fit into the text box uh, better. Uh, When they ported it and gave it an English translation, all the text boxes are gargantuan. They take up literally 75% of the screen. And in a game that is crazy text heavy, that's really bad. At least you can read it. Oh, you can read it, all right. I mean, I guess if you were home, I was playing this on my TV, so I could see it real well. You unfortunately, you have to translate it to the from horrible English to almost legible English. Yes, I got quite a few hoes as I it, watched it. Uh, yeah, it probably it probably said ho quite a few times. It was. It's unfortunate that this game was rushed to the 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 English speaking market, and uh, the translations really. Things that were supposed to be serious in the story have so many uh, technical f- errors in its the translation that it, it becomes comical. Although, to be honest, the game itself is not very serious to begin with. Uh, when you start the game up, did this confuse the heck out of you? When you start in battle, yeah, you yeah. When you it's you come up to your title screen, it says, "Oh, press A to begin." You press A, bam, you are fighting. I thought it loaded a save game. I did as well. I was like. What in the world? No instructions. I'm no so tutorials. happy to hear you say that because I, I I restarted a couple of times. I'm like, nope, it's yes. it. No instructions. No tutorial. It drops you 100 percent right into battle uh, against foes that are easy to defeat. But this isn't like uh, Final Fantasy. Kind of did the same kind of gimmick, but nothing to this re- to this degree. It was just instant battle and with no instructions. And in a game where you could position your fighters. Uh, well, you have a team of two when you start. Uh, versus the enemy in sort of a uh, advanced wars type tactical maneuver around the map. It's very, very confusing. I think that was a very poor choice on their part. I couldn't tell where where you were at. It made a whole lot of difference as to who you could hit or what uh, damage you did. It, it, you really, it I was wondering if it mattered because I'd be like I'd be moves. like far away and I could still attack and yes. hit the move. Yeah, some special moves. Uh, would do like cones or lines, so that kind of positioning is what really matters. Oh, I see. Um, as the game goes on, what you find out is <clears throat> your character is trying to foil. Well, it's kind of broken up into three storylines. You're trying to find your father. You're trying to impress the society, which is the adventure league that gives the missions to go out and cl- reclaim. Things from these uh, you know, relics from different caves or taverns or whatever. In fact, when the story picks up, you're just failing to get something yes. for the society. Yes. Yeah. And uh, 
The last thing, and I guess the most predominant part of the story, is you're trying to pay off your crippling debt. <laughs> so, I mean, and the funny thing is, at the beginning of the game, <laughs> where you, you go out and this other guy gets the treasure. It's yeah. a girl, actually. Yeah. And you go back, and, and uh, the butler's yes. like, well, yeah. we're in hock for that adventure, and you got no money. And he starts to cry, and he has to be strong. And you're just yeah. like, you, I just started the game. Yes. I've already failed. <laughs> you're instantly a huge loser. That's and the right. funny thing is, the kids you play, it's just like, ah, screw it. And the butler's like, you know, you know, all the great adventures in this family have started out like, like people that didn't give a crap about anything. This guy will truly be great. I just got to wait him <laughs> yeah. out. It's like, uh, you're very, you're very optimistic butler, pal. Yes. And, and the game, again, gives you no direction. Once you get past the, the fighting introduction, it drops you in a town and doesn't tell you anything. Doesn't tell you where to go. Doesn't... Well, it sort of does. You, it, the guy sort of alludes that you should go to, the, to get another mission. Right. Now, I didn't go get supplies or anything the first time out. I just went on the mission, and I got smashed. Like, well, maybe I should have done some stuff before I left town. And, and, and that's how this game goes. Uh, it was supposed to have been a role-playing game that you could play forever. Because after you go through the story, and I definitely did not get this far, but after you finish the story, you enter what's called Endless Mode, where you start back at level 1, and it puts you in a dungeon with an endless amount of floors. And that's something they actually sold the Dreamcast on. It was, it was a role-playing game you could play forever. But it's, it's just the same thing over and over with the things getting harder each time you do it. Yeah. Um, there's really not a whole lot more to say about this, unfortunately. It is an RPG. I, I, can't, I can't tell you the differences between the Dreamcast version and the, the Neo Geo Pocket Color. Um, when you're moving around the map, uh, enemies will only move when you move. So you can dodge enemies and then just have them in a big train behind you yeah. until you get to somewhere where you can't make the turn in enough moves or something and everything catches up to you and attacks you at once. And you're bugged. Um, also, one enemy on your screen means could mean you're fighting one guy, three guys, yes. four yeah, guys. It, the enemy on the, I guess, overhead maps, the way to think about it, uh, it represents one to four enemies. I think four is the most I ever fought at one time. Um, the Dreamcast version had a jump. Wouldn't have hurt. No that jump. Helped, it would have helped alleviate a lot of the meaningless combat you go through. Uh, it's possible on the Neo Geo to save anywhere. Um, the town is accessed through the menu system. Yeah. Rather than, you know, exploring the town. It works. The menu system works because you just, you just pick where you want to go. Uh, in, I thought that was good, actually. Yeah, in battle, uh, a lot of names and moves are abbreviated so that you can uh, uh, fit it all on the screen. Yeah. Um, tons, as we've talked about, there were tons of grammatical errors. Uh, spelling errors, of course. Uh, the game pace was actually faster in the pocket version because you got more experience, which I guess makes sense because I I see them expecting people to play this while they're traveling on a bus, on a train, yep. not just sitting down and playing for hours and hours. Here's a huge one, and this really bugged me in the game. All of the traps are invisible. So you're just walking around the map, and this is a throwback to... Uh, game, the game I played on the Apple, sometimes you'll just hit an invisible square and get teleported to a random place. <laughs> and that was really annoying. That would explain that, because I was wondering what the heck happened. It, it was, it, and the thing is, is it's not even like it repopulated the enemies. You just teleported back and had to take the time to go all the way back through the map. And sometimes when you get teleported, I was at the ending door of a, of a floor, and I got teleported all the way back to the beginning I was like, I almost quit. I was like, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. Uh, and of course, the art style is tremendously different. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> whereas imagine. the Dreamcast used all 3D models, uh, and this, of course, did not. Um, in Japan, this game is pretty beloved. Uh, I can see it. I'm not saying this is even a bad game. Um, 
it is an RPG with a really loose storyline. I don't like the idea of instantly being in debt, and that's my my whole mission in the game is to get out of debt. Um, I kind of like that actually. <sighs> I, it's, it's like my life. That's yeah, sort of my but, mission in life. But see, I don't need a role playing game of my life. Well, I'm true. playing it right now. Yeah, but you should be good at it. Well, <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, in Japan, you know, you were talking about the boxes. Yeah. How they all got switched to the the soft Cheapos, paper. Yeah. Not this game. Oh, this yeah. game retained its plastic box even after everything else switched. Oh. Now here's for the craziness of this. All right. As I. Uh, mentioned to you when we were picking games, I said, if I can find the English version of this, this is the game I'm going to play. Yeah. I did not realize how rare the English uh, part for this was. Rumor has it, 5,000 were produced. Wow. And then uh, when the company was sold, they pulled all of the unsold copies off the shelf had them shipped back to Japan, rewritten with the Japanese version, and put back on the shelf. Wow, so they're pretty super rare. Uh, now, of course, I can't confirm that. Uh, however, the eBay pricing of this game kind of leads me to believe that is possible as a full mint condition with box of this sold uh, just a few days ago for an incredible... A staggering six hundred and fifty-seven dollars. Wow, man, that is that's about what you would guess for something of that qual of that rarity. Now the Japanese version, uh, tremendously cheaper, going for as little as twenty dollars. Good luck playing this if you're in America trying to figure oh, out what they're saying. No, yeah, no you know, chance. I, I, of course, I played the American, the English version. Oh, I, yes, I, I now emulated. Now you know. It's pretty well known that these are not my style of game. Right. That said, this is such a stupid, goofy game. And they did some things that I really like that most of these games don't do. Number one, it's not, I mean, at least up to the point where I play, I played this more than you, the listeners, or anyone could have possibly imagined, including myself. <laughs> uh, I didn't spend 20 hours on it, but I spent hours on it. And what I'll say is, the plot is light and silly. Yes. The uh, combat, the movement is straightforward. Yes. It's not complicated. It's very easy. Yeah. The movement through town and into different areas is not tedious. That's a big plus. That's a big plus. I don't have to walk over and over. I'm not wasting time doing crap. Okay. I'm in the dungeon. I go, and you can pick what missions you want to go on. Yeah. When you go and uh, to get your missions, and so you can pick sort of what kind of terrain you're going to be going yep. to. Um, the uh, uh, I, it's got a, I wouldn't say it's got a steep learning curve, but I mean no. you, it, it's got a, it's you can learn it. If I can do it, anyone can. Now, would I sit around playing this thing? No. However, if I had this sort of portable, if I owned it, if I had a, the ability to play it, and I was waiting for something. I can see popping this out. It's like, I mean, it's better than, say, Solitaire or Spades. Yeah. And it's not that deep where you can't, you know, you can play it and you can uh, uh, have a good time going through a little bit of a dungeon. There's a lot of encounters in some of these dungeons that get kind of tedious, you know, but I was advancing quick enough to where I wasn't irritated. It wasn't like Zelda or somewhere I've got to go out there and just sit around chopping and stuff and walking around the country so like a like a dork. I like the fact that you you got to where you wanted to go. So, I, personally, I thought it was okay. I hated it. Oh, well, there you go. Um, oh, by the way, the English-Japanese translation added bonus. I like that. <laughs> well, too. it was good fun, I will admit. No, this... I um, am someone who will prefer a deep, rich story. And when there isn't a deep, rich story, um, it, it kind of makes me sad. And this did not have a deep, rich story. Uh, I'm someone who, uh, in the modern era, uh, Divinity 2, Original Sin, holy cow, I loved it. Uh, in a more retro setting, uh, I guess Final Fantasy 7, I super enjoyed. Even Final Fantasy 3, 
uh, as it was for us in the States. Loved it. Uh, this kind of stuff, I don't know, too cutesy. I didn't like that your partner never talked. I thought that was just a dumb gimmick. I like the fact that the, when you, the very first chick you meet, bad mouths her. Yeah. She's like, look at this loser. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, it's I a, agree with her. You should have. She's the one who got the treasure. Go with her. It, it's too, it was just too cutesy for me. It uh, was, I mean, they're all it, like that. Though. No, they're not. No, they're right. not. And uh, it wasn't deep enough. But still, I, I, I sure as heck wouldn't pay 650 bucks for it. But, you know, I would play it. But I would play your game first in a heartbeat. I will say, while we're on the subject, uh, and before we close it down, the uh, I priced this item. The, the actual console itself. And if you're looking, if you're in the market for a Neo Geo Pocket Color, they can be bought. Uh, I saw them go on a rare occasion for around $66, but the general average, depending on what you got with it, was $100 plus. I'd say close to the $120 range yeah. in a box. So it can be had. Uh, I, the black, the uh, monochrome ones, you know, I didn't rem I didn't look for them because I just can't imagine why you'd want one. Yeah, I can't either. Uh, given the library and the and the lack of tiles for it, so you you got it closed up on that one. I do. That's pretty much it. Tremendous. Now, normally we would start the music, but we're not going to start yep. the music. There is this no week music to be had because last week we we spun the wheel and we chose we selected Lady Luck acquired us the fans' choice, the yes. chat choice. Now, Brent, we had a pretty good feedback we on did. this one. We did, yes. Uh, More I, than the last time. I tallied uh, our various uh, uh, our various votes across the three platforms that were available, which was underneath on, uh, as a comment underneath the uh, YouTube, at our email address, which should be displaying, and at our Discord. Um and it was very close. In fact, it was tied up until uh, until pretty late in the game. We, I let votes stay open until today. Uh, and it was very close. But we're going to do something we really haven't. I'm not sure. We may have done it one other time. But we're going to do a flashback to a system that we covered once before. Oh, we're doubling up, huh? Yes, sir. Um, and this system requires uh, a second look. Plus, it is as timely as today's headlines. Uh, by uh, as the slimmest of margins, uh, the voice of the people has spoken, and next week we'll be picking games from the vast library of ZX Spectrum games. Oh, you the know old, what? I'm okay with that. The old ZX, or for you Yanks like myself, the old Timex Sinclair 1000. Uh, the uh, the last time we did the uh, Spectrum, I had a real good time playing my game, and. Uh, Boats, I think, was pretty good too. It's been so long as I can't remember. It was way back uh, in the early days of, of, of the show. So next week uh, we will be playing games on the Spectrum. Brent, have you ever played the Spectrum? I have, yes. Okay, well then you're in business, buddy, and you know I have, y'all. So please, uh, please join us next <laughs> week as we as we listen to you, the people. And I will admit before we go that uh, coming in a very close second. Very close. Was the Atari 5200. Yeah. Hey, I thought that was going to win it. I really We also did. had uh, a couple of votes for some stuff I've never even heard of. Yeah. I had to I had to do a Google search even to determine what this stuff was. So, But uh, some of the stuff we're going to throw on the uh, wheel uh, somewhere in the near future. But next week, ZX Spectrum. Should be a fun time. So, yes. uh, until next week, bye-bye. Yeah.